Welcome back friends to the Sunshine State of Florida and Miami International Airport. Yesterday we were taxiing to the holding short point of the runway 09. So right now we are parked at holding short point and we are ready to line up and take off for our departure into Nassau Airport in Bahamas. After takeoff, we will be looking into the other uh, functions that are brought by the working title CJ4 mode. A big shout out to the developer team for this great mode that significantly improved this aircraft. Without further ado, let's jump into the cockpit, shall we? So right now we are going to do a quick uh, takeoff configuration check. As you see, flaps are at 15 degrees, engines are running, landing lights can come on, uh, strobe can come on because we are about to enter the runway and we can turn on the uh, seat belt signs. May I have your attention please? At this time, please comply with the illuminated seat belt and no smoking All right, while he is doing his uh, announcement, our autopilot is set. We are currently set for 33,000 feet, which is our cruising altitude. And if I bring the chart over, which is the skips to our nav departure out of Miami International, we are currently here. We will depart, take 124 to Sabra and then 107 to Ibis, and from there on our way. There are no altitude restrictions or speed restrictions on this chart only thing we need to ensure is to keep the speed at or below 250 knots below 10,000 feet and we should be good to go from there so um, I think we are pretty much set up for takeoff right now so we can enter the runway and line, line up let's release the parking brake parking brake released so now let's add some power, check and make sure there are no airports on final arrival or approach and now we are ready to line up. After lining up we are going to go about 40% throttle, let the engines stabilize and then we will go full power for our takeoff run. Right now, engines are stable, release the brakes and full power. I'm keeping forward pressure on the uh, yoke to prevent the aircraft from lifting its nose until we reach the V-speed of 90, I think 112. So we are already at uh, rotate speed. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay. Not a good takeoff. I don't know if we had a wind or something, but we will fly the runway heading for a while. And let me see, that's better. Okay, so we are passing almost 500 feet. Yard Emperor can come on, we can pull the throttle back. And now we are going to follow the flight plan. Let's go to memory 2 to see where we are at. So we are currently on our way. So the GPS signal is telling me to turn left a little bit. And now we can retract the flaps and deploy the, take the landing gear, which I forgot after takeoff because we had a positive rate. So now the speed is increasing like crazy. I will cut the throttle a little bit. Uh, to maintain 250 and turn like that I think that's good enough just a little bit off course here so I'm trying to correct myself check the needle so that needle needs to be perfectly aligned uh, so that we are on track I think this will be good I'm still hand flying by the way while clamping um, and watching the speed and the direction of the aircraft I think we can um, do like this and raise our head a little bit and do this. That's better. 
All right. So I think we can turn on autopilot and it will get us to a climb speed of 180. We can try 172, but right now I'm going to try 180 and see what happens. One thing though, we are going to pass through the cloud, so it's a good idea to turn on the pedal heat while we are passing through the clouds and then we can turn it off because the temperature is around 20 degrees right now outside so it's pretty warm and we don't need a pedal heat uh, until we drop below zero so right now the aircraft is trying to um, maintain the speed we set so we can take a look at the throttle and see it's at climb detent right there I think it is we can take a closer look by I think from this wheel and see and it is almost there so we can pull it back just slightly and that will give us the climb speed now while the aircraft is doing its thing and we are climbing we can turn off the taxi lights and then we are passing 10,000 we will turn off the landing lights that's actually what I'm waiting for but it's not gonna hurt um, to take a look at here so we have 2,000 feet to go so let's go to the index page and go through the the other uh, functions that are added by the working title mod so MCDU menu it's going to show you the GPS position of the aircraft, track angle, ground speed. Um, that's the GPS accuracy, which is 0 0.05 uh, knots. Let's see, we are getting close to 10,000. Go back to index page. Frequency, we discussed this yesterday. This is going to display the frequencies of the airports on your flight plan or another airport that you wanna see the information for. We passed 10,000 so we can turn off the landing light and from there we are good to go. We can turn off the belts to release the passengers so that they can do their thing. And we are climbing nicely so that's good. The status page is giving information about the navigation data and the active database, um, UTC time, date, and then uh, let me tune out of that frequency. Um, so that we don't, yeah, there we go. We don't get distracted by ATC because I am not using ATC at all. Uh, the status page, yeah. And then the next page, model, variant name, engine type, uh, maximum takeoff weight, V-speed database, so it's showing you the V-speed information. Uh, we can go back to index. Um, next page. I think we have seen this um, route menu where you call the flight plan, just a recap of that. Um, and the the database where you can search for an airport and see the information let's go back um, arrival data we haven't selected any approach but we will do here in a second to take a look at it too and the other thing is the progress page so this is showing you information which we weren't, weren't able to see about your flight so right now we are about to pass Ibis waypoint to Krabi that's gonna take 60 in 15.8 miles right now and then skips which is the last waypoint of our departure and then from there we have 155 miles to Nassau on the next page it's giving us information about the crosswind from right at 19 knots headwind 17 16 knots the total wind information 156 uh, from 156 at 25 knots um, this is 
uh, standard outside temperature or standard air temperature as far as I know um, I'm trying to think of it whether it was whether it was standard or something else um, I'll look it up um, and then the dew point and true air speed is displayed here and the position accuracy of the GPS as you see here so that's pretty good and I think that's about it that I want to share so let's go and pick our uh, arrival into Nassau so we are going to do an ILS approach to runway 14 doesn't have any star so transition is um, let me check the chart real quick and share that with you so that we know um, Mike, Yankee, November, November we know exactly what transition we are looking for or whether we are going to need a transition or not so approach runway 14 ILS approach to runway 14 and here is the chart so it's coming from Mooney and that tells me that we are not going to need a um, we are not going to need a uh, transition to be honest with you how I know it well uh, it's coming from another side app that I like to use uh, during flying which I can share more details about if you are interested but I won't be able to share everything about this app uh, in this short tutorial this is called little nav map I am at currently version 264 beta I need to open this a little bit and get rid of this to the side so that we can see the map just a little bit better. So that's our flight plan that I entered. As you see the aircraft right there and this dotted line is what we took out of Miami so that looks pretty accurate to me even if I was hand flying. Uh, so if we scroll down as you see we are coming to Velks and then Muni and then into the runway so there is no transition and that's why I thought we are not going to need a Hinze transition which might be somewhere around here uh, we can look it up from these uh, nav aids Hinze and let's see where Hinze is there right there actually that might not be a bad idea we can use this as a transition to um, to avoid that sharp turn right there so that sounds good to me let's just execute that and see what happens Did you? I'm not sure if it took it so let's see arrival in Z execute now it happened okay there was a glitch for a second so now I'm gonna do the same thing on little nav map and I'm going to add this to the flight plan add to flight plan and there you go so now that turn is not that sharp this one is but it's okay because we have 17 miles to correct our course and then this will give us a perfect uh, approach into runway and little nav map is also giving me the ILS frequencies if I hover over but we don't need this because now the mod is giving us all the frequencies that we might potentially need so that is also good and I also have that frequency displayed on the chart speaking of the approach we are going to descend to 2000 and eventually to 1700 to capture the glide slope so looks like Mooney is our initial approach fix that's displayed here if I can zoom in just a little bit more there you go Mooney is our initial approach fix and then um, when we are at 6.9 miles from this VOR station which is Nassau I'm sorry I think that's the localizer yeah India Zulu Quebec Alpha 6.9 miles away from that 
is going to be our uh, final approach fix or final fix. So that's good. Let's put this aside. So we have selected our arrival and now we can go and see what arrival data we can see here. So as you see now, because we have an approach selected, it's showing the airport, it's showing the localizer frequency, which is perfectly matching with the chart if you take a look at here. And it's giving us the glide slope angle, which is 3 degrees. Localizer true bearing, this is going to be our um, bearing from current location to that localizer, which tells that it is 1, 3, Four, and our current heading is 113 and then the runway threshold is at 13 feet very good very good so all this functionality uh oh we got some icing let's just turn on the um, anti-ice to get rid of those and this is still not working Okay, eventually it will melt the ice, but let's take a look from outside to see how bad it was while we were talking. Oh my god, oh my goodness, look at that, we are covered in ice and I didn't even realize it. So what's our altitude? We are still climbing, so that's okay. We can pull the speed back to 170 to have a faster climb, which will get us to our altitude faster. And as you see, it's uh, lightning outside, but right now Miami is experiencing a tropical thunderstorm in real life. Uh, a tropical storm that has thunder thunderstorms, if I can speak. Oh my gosh, what's happening to me right now? Uh, and I think that's natural because the latest patch should have fixed those um, lightning issues that people were posting about. So, all in all, I think we are good. Uh, outside is a little bit cloudy. IFR conditions here. And we are getting there and hopefully that ice will make melt. I will keep the anti-ice systems on until I see that cleared up. But I didn't realize it while I was talking to you guys. You can turn on some instrument lights here and the panel lighting can brighten the MCDU, not MCDU, that's Airbus, this is FMC, that's Boeing or, you know, that type of different language, it's outside of Airbus, everybody calls it FMC. But yeah, so we are currently traveling towards our, our last waypoint of uh, our SID, I can switch to terrain but I'll keep it at weather radar and fly like this and bring you guys back when we are getting close to uh, our arrival because I don't want to hold you guys while I'm cruising outside and trying to get there it's just wasting all your time if you ask me uh, to do that and for some reason my frames are dropping like crazy and not sure what's going on there uh, when I go outside it's dropping my frames so I shared the information about little nav map I'm going to close it right now and I will keep cruising and maybe just keep recording and speed up this part of the video so that you get to see the whole flight and I will bring you guys back or at least start talking again uh, when we are close to our arrival see you in a little bit
okay guys the other thing I want to share with you is uh, the, the banana arc that shows you when you should expect to reach your set altitude so I did set ourselves for 2000 feet and we are descending at the rate of 1000 feet per minute so if I increase this you should see that arc right there coming down and it is going to show me when I should reach or where I should reach rather um, my set altitude which is pretty neat so it's, so it's not visible here but it is showing me that before that waypoint I will be at 2000 so right now I think I can decrease the rate just a tiny bit so that I am at 2000 right before there so this is a quite handy um, display on the MFD or slash ND that helps you to decide how fast you should descend and there is also a top of descent calculation which we just passed, it's over here um, I don't know if it will be visible if I yeah right there TOD if you see let me just get closer that is where we should have started descending before our even our final waypoint of our seat so that tells me 33,000 feet for this flight is a little bit overkill so we should have uh, told about that but it's coming from sim brief so I thought it might be okay but in this case looks like it isn't because we just passed the top of descent you should normally start descending there at a the rate of 1000 to 1500 and watch that arc to see where you are going to uh, reach your set altitude or desired altitude which in this case we are reaching right about there that is perfectly fine so I'm okay with that as soon as we descend and the other trick here is if you don't want to uh, go that fast or if you think that's gonna pass it that arc is below and if you really are late to start your descent you can use the speed brakes and you know extend them just a tiny bit to slow yourself down so that that arc uh, comes even uh, back uh, to give you some more room for uh, I think I'm gonna keep it like that and as you see as we slow down it keeps coming back so um, I will I will keep it like this and see where it uh, takes us but you can slow yourself down like that and um, ensure that you are going to meet that altitude or reach that altitude rather um, at a reasonable distance, uh, not too far away, not too close to your initial approach fix, if that makes sense. So I will keep descending, bring you guys back when we are really close to our initial approach fix. Enjoy the flight.
Hello again, we just passed 18,000 feet, so let's set our altimeter by pressing the B key and let's program our approach page on the FMC. So we go to performance and there's some other stuff here like fuel management. Let's just talk about this for a second. It is showing the fuel on board, time to reserve, that's 2 hours 44 minutes, fuel flow, uh, distance or range to the reserve, so we still have 700 nautical miles distance with the onboard fuel, how much reserve we have, uh, and the ground speed is displayed here. If I go back, flight log, it's showing how much fuel we used, takeoff time was 16.34, that's I think UTC, so we are airborne almost half an hour now. Um, true airspeed, these are not displayed, ground distance, air distance, but I think the developers will add this functionality as the uh, mode progresses. And finally the approach page. So we are approaching to runway 14, runway length is there, QNH and wind information that we need to set and for that I'm going to bring up the little name map window one more time and if I click to the destination airport down below we see the wind information 126 at 14 knots and the temperature is 26 degrees so 126 oops 126 at 14 knots temperature is 26 degrees and let's check the QNH QNH is 29086 29.86 let's plug it in and our approach page is set so now we are all ready for the, the approach one thing we can check is, we can go to the tune page and check the ILS frequency is entered, which is uh, TCAS mode is at standby because I haven't worried, I wasn't worried about the ATC so we can make it TARA to, to transmit and receive the transponder signal that really doesn't matter and this is where you set your square code to uh, which I have I think explained in the first CJ4 tutorial but let's just keep it there for fun right okay so let's see where we are at we are very close and just about to pass 10,000 let's take a look at outside and see if the wind uh, if the ice is gone which I cannot see from here that's a shame it is gone, so we can turn on off the anti-ice systems. And outside air temperature is 8 degrees, so we don't need pedo heat at all. We can turn that off as well, and we are about to pass 10,000, so we can turn on the landing lights just about now. Cool. So let's adjust the range just a little bit more so that we have a better um, view of the waypoints ahead and we are coming down to our transition which is uh, Hinzi that we entered uh, while we are picking our approach and I also brought up the FMS information to here rather than the engine information by clicking to this and scrolling down to FMS text. We can take a look at the passenger briefing and there is landing but there is no descent uh, briefing right now. We will do the landing one um, maybe when we get close because we can get to that easily from this spot. Right now I'm gonna keep the FMS information right there. If I want to see the system information, it can be displayed as a pop-up window right there. So I'm not worried about that too, too much. Passing 7,000, 8,000 8, feet. Let's synchronize the altitude one more time and resynchronize our heading bug. 
and keep descending. So for some reason after this patch the clouds start to look like crap. I don't know if each update is degrading the simulator visually or is this something that I can fix by going through some settings. Up above looks okay but the clouds down below uh, are looking crap and I have a guess because I fixed this by um, turning off the sharpening in the user configuration file and with the patch that might be overwritten which might have caused this problem again so I will check that after the uh, recording to see if I can fix this but right now I'm not pleased with how clouds are looking at the moment passing 6000 let's see if I can get a better view by dropping the dis distance of the range or to 20 miles that's you see here 20 miles range is this and that's 10 miles and there you go now we started to receive the localizer signal and this is also coming with the mod now we have a ghost needle right now showing where the localizer is and pointing directly to the localizer which is great to have some more situational awareness so this is also coming from the mod it's quite handy you will see this needle moving as we make turns and get close to the initial approach fix and that little needle I can't speak today that needle will perfectly align with our uh, magenta line here when we make that final turn into the runway and capture the localizer and we see the you see when we have the needle and receiving the signal we started to uh, display the, the localizer and the glide slope um, information here uh, on the PFD as well so I'm quite liking this mod it brings this aircraft definitely to the next level and this aircraft became one of my favorite to fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator along with Airbus A320 which also has a great mod with a lot of functions added um, so these two and the Bonanza G36 as a prop uh, aircraft uh, is my go-to plane when I crave for some general aviation propeller plane alright so we're getting close to our transition and then we will make a left turn so what happened is um, it removed one of the waypoints um, if I bring little nav map you will see what I'm talking about um, here in a second on the map remember this was going all the way to here to where is that waypoint whatever can't remember which one was it but it was on something called like wheezy or whatever and then making a sharp turn to this Hinzi uh, I think it's oh, okay it's right here the Welks waypoint so we initial plan was taking us to here making a sharp turn back to Hinzi but the aircraft SM FMC was smarter than Simbrief not Simbrief um, the little nav map and it made a shortcut rather than going all the way down there it's taking a quick turn um, to after the after the transition so when we selected the transition this is what happened cool so we are about to make that turn and I think I can bring the range to 10 right now so what's gonna happen is uh, I think we descended so we can increase some uh, we can increase the speed a little bit not too too much just around 190 80 knots we are at currently 2000 which we already saw with the banana so we perfectly uh, made it to 2000 feet as displayed over here uh, before our initial approach fix which is great so right now what we are waiting for is we are waiting for this leg of the flight to take us to the initial approach fix and I, I'm thinking about when we make this turn I'm thinking about turning on the approach mode and we will start our um, landing and we will start slowing down before we hit the initial approach fix and uh, deploy some flaps and then deploy the landing gear and then deploy 
last level of flaps which is going to be 35 degree of flaps uh, for landing and that will be it uh, for the final configuration or um, configuring the aircraft before fully established and ready to capture the glide slope right now we are 6.7 miles away from our um, initial approach fix and the aircraft is going a little bit faster than I'd like so I'm going to come back on the throttle and slow her down to around 200 knots I would say <coughs> and wait until we capture the uh, we, we reach to the initial approach fix not capture as you see now the needle is about to align so we can now turn on the approach mode and start to receive um, the glide slope and localizer information and let's align our heading and our initial uh, I'm sorry our missed approach altitude is 2000 so I'm gonna wait a little bit more but now we need to descend to 1700 oops vertical speed just a tiny bit maybe 500 p per minute would do maybe a little bit faster than that and I'm gonna extend one level of flap so I have to slow I need to slow us down and for that purpose I am going to do some speed brakes or spoilers to slow us down to 160 knots so that I can deploy flaps so we are getting close to our final approach fix and we are at 1700 which was depicted on the chart as you see here that's us and this is our uh, final approach fix which we should expect to capture the localizer oh no I'm sorry glide slope localizer is already captured so extending one level of flaps as you see there and maybe deploying the landing gear right now landing gear deployed glide slope diamond is coming down so when it meets this white line we will capture the glide slope and start our descent into the runway and one thing I want to check is go to the performance approach page go to the next page and our approach speed is 112 I will send that as a speed bug uh, I forgot to go to the next page for the approach so when you go to the next page you will see anti-ice is off and your um, approach speed is 112 and the next page is giving some information that we don't need at the moment so right now we have not captured the glide slope for some reason that's interesting let me see what's going outside looks like we did capture the glide slope but I'm not sure what's going on so let's let's deploy the next level of flaps and see what happens I need to speed up just a tiny bit looks like we are descending but that white GS sign didn't turn to green so I'm not sure maybe let's switch to the localizer and see what happens we are we captured the localizer that's for sure but glide slope I don't know if I had to switch I didn't think I would because I have done a lot of landings with um, not switching the nav source but let's see if that helps uh, to capture the glide slope looks like we are on the glide slope we are approaching the runway and getting close to our minimums which is 232 that's on the chart right there I haven't set it up into the references but as you see we are still high so I'm gonna 
disengage the autopilot I will look to what's happening with the glide slope but I will try to bring us down and it's bumpy just a little bit I'm not sure I will keep the out emperor and correct ourselves for the approach this might be the sensitivity, sensitivity settings messed up after patch I have to look those up and correct it if necessary uh, we are still too high so I have to pitch down and slow down and I might go silent at times because I'm trying to focus on landing this aircraft without any problems and it's bumping around for some reason so we'll see if we can get those two red lights and two white which we did just now and we are perfectly aligned right now this became a visual approach rather than ILS but you guys have seen ILS approaches enough so it shouldn't be a problem for you so we are about to pass the threshold just correcting ourselves for runway and coming down throttle to idle and just pull tiny bit tiny bit still watching the altitude okay speed brakes deployed and we can now start braking just a little bit to slow ourselves down and then go into the middle to align ourselves with the runway okay I think we can take this exit right now perfect perfect let's stop here for a second that was a nice landing not too bad even if we didn't capture the glide slope landing lights and strobe can turn off and taxi lights can come on now we can start uh, retracting the flaps and the speed brakes or the spoilers rather and let's taxi to a parking point or stand or ramp whatever it might be I'm gonna take the I think I'm gonna take the left turn here and then make a right turn whenever I can maybe just from there and then park somewhere over there you see that that's a texture problem right there so that might be something uh, wrong going on after the patch I have never been to this airport so I'm not sure what's happening but that's a texture uh, not displayed correctly or the simulator cannot find the associated texture with that building it might be an autogen problem too so let's take this turn here and try to come to a stop and park there not to into that aircraft actually okay let's try this slow 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 alright I didn't see that aircraft uh, parked over there but okay welcome to Bahamas guys we made it parking brake is set now we can start cleaning things up beacon can stay on because the engines are still running which we will uh, shut down here in a second this can turn off too time to shut this aircraft down or power it down rather engines are stopping climate control to off this can go back to norm and we can after the engines pull down we can turn off the avionics and then the battery after that just waiting for the engines to spool down which eventually they will and two still dropping just a little bit more turn off the avionics and turn the battery power off 
there you go thank you guys for watching i hope this helps you to better understand the mod and what it's providing um, i think this is going to be it for this video uh, the weather is nice here i wish i was there personally and take a dip into the caribbean sea but that's not possible at the moment whatever um, next episode I will think about something and I'm also thinking about um, doing a Watson tutorial too not maybe with a jet but maybe with a propeller aircraft to have enough time to speak also uh, pay attention to what the controller is instructing but until next time I think the next video will be over the weekend uh, take care of yourself and I will see you in the next video